mindset that I had at the time was a very confusing one. I didn't know what I was doing. I had to go along and be nice to everyone that I knew. I had to do well in school, even though I got distracted a lot. And I had to be nice to the teachers. Now, there are some students that weren't uh, happy with the fact that I was so nice to the teachers, to the point where people called me either teacher's pet, or they said I was too nice, they called me derogatory names, and people saw uh, being nice to them as a sign of weakness and something where they can use that as a tool to take advantage of me. And it took a while to get to a point where I felt confident in myself to, to feel that I can be better than what I was at the time. But luckily, things got better going through high school to where I am now. But yeah, to basically get that point, the mindset that I was in was confusion. Back in high school, I was very confused. I didn't really know which path I was going on. I remember for my birthday, it was November 3rd, and before then, I had had an idea, or my parents had an idea, to have a short little get-together with my friends from school. I didn't really have that many friends. I was the person that everyone knew, but no one really knew. People knew my name, and oh, he's a nice guy, but they didn't really know who I was as a person. And I remember going back upstairs and downstairs, walking around the hallway, not hearing a single doorbell ring. In the end, I knew. I mean, as much as I kept walking around into the kitchen and walking back, you know, but the party was at 6.30. And I just kept walking back and forth, and in my head I knew. No one came. No one came. And I, I just, I knew that in the end, like, why would they? I never gave any reason. I wasn't open with people, so why would people want anything out of me? I couldn't come up with any reasons. All I was thinking were the negatives instead of the positives. I kept thinking, you know, what is wrong with me? I remember walking through in the hallway in the lobby just thinking with my mom, just going down the stairs with my sister, and I just ended up falling. I ended up crying because what was wrong with me? My mom, my dad, and my sister kept pushing me to join drama and joining me to, wanting me to act because they knew that it would break me out of my shell and get me talking. I was very nervous to audition. I was very nervous to audition for a show, audition to be on stage. I saw it as above me. I saw it kind of like it was the top of the hill and I was at the very bottom and I had no idea how to climb up. And I was nervous to the point where I didn't even find a monologue for my first audition. My mom and my sister kept trying to show me different ones, but I was like, okay, sure, I'll make sure to look for it. But I procrastinated and it ended up being the case where the day of the audition was the day that I asked my teacher, my living in a contemporary world teacher, Mr. Smith, which he was one of the directors for, Titanic the Musical. I asked him if there was a way to audition. At the last day of auditions, I felt the excitement didn't come until after I had auditioned. It wasn't until 
after the cast list came up and I saw that I had a part, I didn't think I had a chance. But seeing my name on that cast list on the call board, it was something that I didn't realize was going to change my life. But at the time, I was nervous, but very excited for the adventure to come. The first production I've ever participated in as an actor was Titanic the Musical. After I auditioned and realized I got four parts, I was very intimidated. I had no idea what that meant at the time, but it was something I had to experience later in the future. Because the whole show was taking place of all the actual people that died in the Titanic, but it was um, through a musical. And you would think, oh, how can they have a musical with something so depressing? Well, they focus a lot more on them having such terrible lives, but going on the Titanic, going on the ship of dreams, that they have hope and they have the opportunity to go to America to get some life that they didn't have beforehand. And I think I connected with that a lot, where I was confused and I had no idea where to go moving forward. But being a part of this cast and um, doing the rehearsals on stage, doing the choreography, being a, one of the bandmasters, I was one of the people that played the cello in the show, and play the music for the first class, through that, I was able to find my own happiness, able to figure out who I was going to become moving into high school. And it wasn't until d doing my first rehearsal with the bandmasters is where I truly found happiness because I met my best friend, Adam. He is the person that I uh, met through doing drama in my high school. We didn't instantly become friends, but um, after that first production, uh, the friendship literally just clicked. We were very similar. Our minds were literally in sync. He could finish my sentence, I could finish his. He was there for me like I was there for him. He and, he's the type of person that he is very outgoing, and he was in the same case as me. He was shy, he was very uh, insecure about his own things as well. But he always tried his best to be positive, make jokes, and make other people laugh, which made him feel better. And in that case, that kind of, I was inspired by that. But it wasn't until I was like, became closer with Adam that we decided to make our own YouTube channel. Since we both had, dream, uh, both had like dreams of just filming different sketches and just making people laugh, making people enjoy themselves. We made our channel called Nerds in Sync based on how uh, no matter what, there's always something that you can relate with, whether there's something that you, you don't necessarily know or there are different things with regarding comic books, anime, um, sci-fi, sports. It doesn't matter what type of things, you have that friend or have that person that as soon as you're talking about it, you're instantly in sync. You know what you're, you, you know what they're going to say next, and you you all come together to uh, to work on this one project and work all your passions together and be able to go towards a goal that you feel uh, will benefit both of your lives. So creating this channel was such fun for me because it allowed me not to only get closer with Adam, but it allowed me to get closer with all my other friends that never even did acting before. And doing these experiences, that's so much fun behind the scenes. There's so much footage where we could just, um, just not just joke around, to get stuff done, but you know, we just had a blast. Like so many memories. I remember each film that we ever, we made. Um, we even recently did a short film called um, um, like Darth Vader Strikes Back. And it was a project we filmed over the summer. We were, and it was such a, it was such a fun process just editing and getting done. Because to me, editing is like putting different puzzle pieces together. And I love how exact it can be and how creating a story and making it flow comes from that. And from doing that with Adam and looking back, it really feels great like years later, like I can just look back at these videos and these things I created and just be like proud with, you know, with my best friends and with Adam to see, wow, look what we made when we were just about 18, 17 years old and 
I can't wait to see what we will continue to create as we go forward. I believe the word that would describe me most would be appreciative. I appreciate a lot more now than I did back then. I was unappreciative of what my family did for me at the time and what my friends were doing for me. I saw myself, even though I was nice to people, even though I was wondering why people didn't like me, I didn't appreciate the people that were in my life. It wasn't me as a victim. I, at moments, I chose to not be friends with people that could have been impactful people in my life. I let peer pressure get to me. I let friendships that weren't really true stay for a long time. And I believe now, I know that there are still flaws that I have. I know that there are things that I still need to work on. But I do appreciate where, I do appreciate where I've come from and appreciate where my journey has gone. And the biggest thing I am happy about is I'm proud of myself. For the first time in my life, I'm proud of myself of where I am. Being in college, being able to have a voice for the first time, and having the confidence just to be myself, not have to be afraid to be somebody else or act like someone else or act mean or act cruel or act like someone that isn't true to me.